You know, when I, when I, when I think about God, he's just awesome. I'm just, I'm just grateful for my present. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm grateful for that, you know. Will Smith, I played an awesome movie. When I tell you guys, man, like, this movie here is like my top 10 movie. And he played this guy by the name of Chris Gardner. And when I tell you Chris, I went through a lot. He invested his money into a, a, a bone density scanner machine and it was really like a portable x-ray. Uh, but what he didn't know was, was that the machine he had invested in, doctors really didn't want. They said it was too costly. They said it was too high. So here he is, he didn't spend his dollars on a machine thinking that he's gonna prosper. Not knowing that to sell this machine was gonna be a beast. Because doctors would say, nah, we good with x-rays. So what it was, was it was a type of machine that would show just a slight better picture than an x-ray. So he was moving around trying to sell this machine and just catching out kind of hell. His wife ended up leaving him. She broke bad, she said she couldn't do it. He ended up getting evicted from his apartment. He ended up getting evicted from the hotel him and his son were staying in. He ended up having to live in the mission. He ended up getting his account garnished from the IRS. He went through a whole lot. Went to jail because he didn't pay his parking tickets. See, it's a rags to riches story. But it's not the money that make me fall in love with this movie. It's the fight that was in this man. He was a true fighter. Some of the things that I saw in that movie, which was a true story, a lot of us would have buckled and be like, I can't keep moving. That's enough. But to see this man continue to keep pushing, and I know it was times when he could have said, you know what, I'm done. I can't do it no more. But he got back up and he kept swinging. He kept fighting. And to see that in a man was truly, truly awesome. If you know anything about fighting, fighting is one of them things that you can't give up. You got to keep pushing. So to see him push was truly a blessing. And that movie was called The Pursuit of Happiness. Let us pray. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. I bless your name. Lord, you Alpha and Omega, Lord. You the beginning and end. You are everything, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. I ask you, Lord, as I give the word, Lord, that you remove anything that's not like you out of me, Lord. You remove my opinion out the way, Lord. Don't let me say nothing that you don't want to be said, Lord. I thank you for that, Lord, because you are everything, Lord. There is not, a, there's not another God like you, Lord. So I ask you on the day, Lord, that you be with me, Lord, and you keep me, Lord, and you protect my mind, Lord, and you protect my tongue, and you protect those things that you won't say, Lord. Give me strength, Lord. Give me courage, Lord. And not only that, Lord, you give the congregation the energy and the strength to say, you know what, I'm going to listen. I'm going to hear. I thank you for that, Lord. And I bless your name, and I die in the Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you will. Can we go to James, verses 13 through 15? That's James, 13 through 15. Can we stand as we read the word? Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, 
and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to, to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. You guys can be seated. So when God showed me the scripture, I'm going to tell you what stuck out to me. Carried away. He said, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. But the NIV version says, but each one is tempted when he is dragged away. Dragged away. Sounds violent to me. And if I had to title my sermon today, it would say, sounds like a fight to me. <laughs> the scripture said that he would be dragged away. You can't drag me playing. If you ever been dragged, even when you playing, it's like, bro, stop dragging me. It's like I'm, 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 I'm not in control. You just pulling and dragging me. Now I got a rug burn on my booty. It's a whole nother situation when you dragging me. That ain't cool to be dragged. It was so crazy when I, 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 I went and looked at the definition of dragged. And it said, pull someone or something forcefully, roughly, like, <laughs> forcefully. You mean to tell me sin or drag you away forcefully? Drag you away hard. How? Because you in the flesh. It's so amazing how, how, when I think about even being carried away, now, I'm not going to sit here and say when I was in school I was just super lustful, like some of my other guys, but I remember how they would pick up young ladies and just walk away with them. I don't know if you're familiar with it. You would pick them up, put them on your shoulder, and, 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 and you would walk down the hallway. They would be screaming, put me down, put me down, put me down, stop, stop playing, stop playing. Man. <laughs> just... Just carry you away where you have no control. I'm sitting here thinking how sin can do that to you. I'm going to be honest. Last year, I came back from the men's retreat. A different man. Like I went and I came back in a different light. And I promise you, man, Next year, if God see fit, and we had that men's retreat, man, you make sure y'all calm. Like, man, you will leave a different man. Do I have, do I have any witnesses? Any witnesses that went and would say, man, when I came back, I was different. I came back a different man to the point where God was dealing with me, and I got on a prayer team, and and my God just was doing some awesome things in my life to the point where he started showing me visions. He started showing me visions. And the visions he would show me would do something to me because he would show me his people and he would show me the enemy and he would show me the things that they were doing. And he would show me the fakeness through visions. And he would show me the people that's pretending, people who aren't who they say they are. And it came from my quiet time. It came from me being in my prayer closet, begging God to reveal itself to me. 
Like, I ain't going in the prayer closet just saying little, little smile prayers. Now, Lord, reveal yourself to me. You really want to feel it, fro? You really want to see it? Man, God has gifted me and, and blessed me to be able to travel the country, and I can look at a crowd of people and tell when they're in the world. I can look at how you handle your, your, your phone or, or, or how you handle your thoughts. I can look at you and tell if you're daydreaming, if you're not even there. So when I tell you, may God have given me this vision, in the vision, if you can imagine a park, a park, and there's millions of people in this park, and he got me looking at it from a bird's eye view, and in this park, people are texting, they talking, they laughing. They just doing what you do in the park. But he would look at me and say, Fro, watch this. And he would say, who all want healing? And people would say, me, Lord. Me, Lord. I want healing. And he would say, what are you willing to do for healing? Now somebody will ask me, they'll say, Fro, how God look? He was everything in the park. He was the trees. He was the ground. He was the sky. He was everything. And when he spoke, everything would move. He would say, Fro, watch this. Who I want deliverance? And people would say, me, God, me, I want deliverance. And he would say, what are you willing to sacrifice? I'm like, whoa. And people would put their hands down. And they would just get back on their phones and just act like they didn't hear God say anything. Like they had no fight. They just would look up and be like, that's too much. And they would look back down and start back talking. Remind you, you're in the presence of God. And you just kind of veer off to the side and act like ain't nothing going on. He would say, Fro, watch this, watch this, Fro. Who I want a blessing? And people would say, I want a blessing, Lord, I want a blessing. He would say, how much are you willing to sow? And people would just drop their hands back down and get back on their phones. They had no fight. He said, Fro, watch this last one. He said, who I want to be married? And people would say, oh, I want to be married. Don't you want to be married? I want to be married. And he would say, how long are you willing to wait? And people would just drop their hand. And they would just look to the side and act like God had nothing to say. And I said, Lord, you cutting deals, ain't it? He said, nah, fro, I ain't cutting deals. He said, look at what they be singing on Sunday mornings. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then he would say, you know what's really crazy, Fro? I'd be like, yes, Lord. He said, check out some of the verses they sing. Hold on. God said, Fro, you ever been to a desert before? I said, no, Lord. He said, where it's hot and it's dry. He said, a desert is a dry place. But they said, you know what? I'll cross the desert for you, Lord. I'll I, 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 I go far for you, Lord. I'll I, 
I climb the mountain, Lord, until you tell me you need something. And so you tell me to sacrifice something, so you tell me to sow something, so you tell me to do something, then all of a sudden, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, at the end of the day, he said, look, we singing these songs and we got to mean them. I can't imagine what it's like for God's people to be on a boat, now a bus. And Pastor Mary say, hey, y'all, we're going to see God's glory. <laughs> we're going to see God's glory. And when we pull up, we pull up to the desert. And he say, it's a five-day walk through the desert. Not only that, it's four days up the mountain. We still got to cross the river to get to see God's glory. Now, remind you, we all were singing on, 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 in the bus on the way there. For your glory, I would do anything just to see you. And so it's time to get out. Then all of a sudden, people feet hurting. They tell me how much water we going to have. They want to know what time we coming back. All of a sudden, I just want to go back to Memphis. I thought you wanted to see the glory. I thought you wanted to see the glory. So it's so amazing how when God gave me that vision, he said, everybody want healing, fro. But what they willing to do for healing and he showed me a couple things, and he showed me prayer for healing. Now, I'm not talking about prayer for Sunday mornings. It's bigger than Sunday mornings. It's bigger than life group. Prayer every day. And I ain't talking about the type of prayer that when you in your car driving to work, and you running late, and all of a sudden you just want to throw something out there to God. I'm not talking about that type of prayer. I'm talking about the type of prayer when you're intentional. The type of prayer you get up in the mornings early because the kids got to be there at 7, so you get up at 5 because you know at the end of the day you got to get this work. That's another kind of prayer. See, I ain't talking about that type of prayer where, you know what I'm saying, we just sit here and say, thank you, Lord, for, 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 for blessing the table. No. We digging deep into prayer. I'm laying hands on myself. I'm laying hands on myself. See, it's a grind. It's a grind. That's why I say uh, uh, it sounds like a fight. It sounds like a fight to me because your flesh don't want to let you pray. You know what time it is when it's time to get up. When it's time to get up, God's shaking you and you roll over. Like, Lord, just give me 10 more minutes, Lord. I need 10 more minutes. That's all you had was 10 minutes. I just need 10 more minutes, Lord. 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, Lord. I promise you, just 10 more. Now, he's saying, get this work. He's saying, get on your face. Let's handle the business. See, in Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46, Matthew talked about when Jesus was going to get crucified. Mm. And he had to go pray. So he got Peter and his other two disciples. And so Jesus said, this is how the flesh is. Jesus said, I need to go pray. I need you to keep watch. He go, he go pray. He come back and they sleep. Now, hold on. They with the son of God. He didn't told you to do something. And you do the opposite. He said, keep watch while I go pray. They come back, he sleep. You know he probably kicked them like, bro, get up. What you doing? He said, hold on. I'm hurting. I'm knowing something finna happen. My heart hurt. I gotta go pray. I need you to just keep watch for an hour. He go and pray again. He come back. They sleep. 
again. So you know at this time, he like, hold on, Peter, Peter, what's up? Peter probably jumped up like, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. He like, hold on. I asked you to do something. And you mean to tell me you can't stay up for an hour for the son of God, for the Alpha Omega? You can't stay up? That's how the flesh is. He turned around, said, look, I got to go pray one more time. And he went and prayed. Came back again and they will sleep again. That show you the flesh. They with God. They with God. And couldn't even kill the flesh. So that's how serious it is. When you praying, it got to be intentional. It ain't going to fall out the sky. It ain't going to fall out the sky. It will not fall out the sky. That grind to pray to get up in the morning will not fall out the sky. You got to be about that business. You know what time it is. You know when you want something, when you want something to happen, you make sure it happens because you grinding. It's the same thing with prayer. You want healing. Matter of fact, you need healing. So you can't afford not to pray. See, me personally, I didn't know prayer was another form of worship. It's another form of worship. God honors that. He honors when you take the time out of your day, pull away. I never forget. I really don't do too much shopping at Village Mark. I try to, you know, it's, it's just, it's hard when you try to, you know, just try to shop. Yeah, I don't want to just go down that line, but hey, I, anyway, we good. I got the armor, but anyway, we good. But, but I went to the door, and the man had a sign on the door. Talking about he closed for 15 minutes. It was like, it was like 1.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm like, I waited. So when he opened the door, I said, man, what you there doing? I'm trying to get to where I got to be. And my said, I was praying. So whoever his God is, he pulled away at one o'clock to pray. So if he put in a, if he put in away at one o'clock, I know he getting it in early in the morning before he go to bed. And I don't know what God he served, but at the end of the day, he pulling away. See, I used to be the, the type of prayer who would, 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 would pray in the car. That's how I know it. I'm rushing, I'm running. Lord, bless my kids when you are, you know, at school, Lord, uh, uh, keep, keep my wife, Lord, and <laughs> See, I, I told the men, I told the men in life group, I said in life group, I said, I said, it's three spirits. The men came, I'm sorry. And I told them, I said, mine, the first spirit, mine is the lazy spirit. Mine, that thing is something serious. The lazy spirit, man, it's killing us. I'm talking about it's killing us. Now we got to get on a grind and get energized and, and not allow being lazy to hold us up. Then God showed me the second spirit. It's the faithless spirit. That's the spirit of the man who would say, man, I already been praying. It ain't work. I've been praying. No, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been praying for, for months. I've been praying for years. You know what I mean? I've been praying and it ain't working. That's the faithless spirit. See, that ain't the spirit of Daniel. See, Daniel had another kind of spirit. Daniel, he prayed when the king said not to pray. The king told him, man, if you pray again, I'm throwing you in the lion's den. My praying was so important to him that he went to the to the top of his his, his, his the floor of his house, opened the, wine, the the blinds, and started praying. That's the only way they saw him praying. So number two, you got the faithless spirit, the, 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 the man who who just give up. You can't afford to give up, brother. You can't afford to give up, sister. You need the healing. So 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 sometimes it might take a little bit longer a little bit longer for that prayer to get answered. It may not be answered when you want it to, but you got to keep praying. 
Because you're talking to God. He going to come. He going to answer. Then you got the proud spirit, man. The proud spirit, like, he ain't trying to hear nothing nobody got to say. His mama, his wife, God, nobody. The spirit just proud. He got it. You can't tell him nothing. He leans to his own understanding. And the scriptures tell us, man, don't lean to your own understanding. But he'll, he'll lean to his own understanding. He'll do things his way. But what happens is, he on his way to destruction because of that proud spirit, that spirit of, 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 of I don't need correction. I don't need you to guide me or show me anything. I got this. So that's why he not praying. And that's a dangerous place to be in. I know that place. I know that place where it's like, man, I got it. I'm going to do me. I'm going to figure this thing out and just wonder why I'm going around in circles and circles and circles. So like I said before, in my vision, God said, who want deliverance? And people would say, me, I want deliverance. But he said, what are you willing to sacrifice? What you willing to sacrifice? Is there anything you would sacrifice for deliverance, for freedom? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Got that dude you living with. Scared to put him out. Don't want to put him out. But you bound. You can't get free. God is telling you to make moves. But you the one in the park putting the phone back up, acting like you ain't hear him speaking, acting like you ain't know that, 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 that the guy was speaking to you, saying, you know, at the end of the day, he holding up the situation. I'm talking about that boyfriend. You know what time it is. But you want deliverance? Man, it's, it's, it's so amazing when I looked up sacrifice. And it said the act of slaughtering an animal or a person or surrendering a possession as an offering to God or to a divine or supernatural figure. Man, what stuck out to me was slaughter. I'm like, what slaughter mean? It mean to kill. Man, it mean to kill. Then I went and looked up surrender. It means to, to submit to, to their authority. Let me tell you what God showed me. He said, there's some of us that then killed the situation with them or her. They don't know where you stay. They don't got your number. Yeah. Name one. You then killed them, but the body's still on the floor in your living room. So you really ain't surrendered the situation to them. You just then killed it. So when I say the body on the floor, that means you're still there looking at it. You're still there smelling it. What I mean is, you're still on Facebook looking at his pictures. You're on IG, still looking at his pictures. You're still thinking about them. You're still reminiscing about them. You ain't gave the feelings to God. So you ain't even really surrendered it. So then when we talk about deliverance, you can't get deliverance because you're sitting there thinking about them all day. Yeah, he ain't got your number. Yeah, y'all ain't talking on the phone. He got a whole nother partner. But you still over there looking at the dead body. So when we talk about deliverance, my God is saying, what you willing to sacrifice? What you willing to sacrifice? Homie, what you willing to sacrifice? So one thing I picked about Chris Gardner, man, he understood that even though he was down, he understood it. Even when he got the job, the internship, and they had no pay. First he said, nah, I can't do it. But I believe he saw a bigger picture. And he said, you know what? I got to sacrifice this. 
I got to sacrifice no pay. And to fast forward his situation, his story is that he became a multi-millionaire for sacrificing six months of no pay. Man, I'm so sorry, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. When I tell you I apologize for anybody who told you that, man, you weren't going to have to pay nothing. I apologize because that ain't true. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something to be able to move to the next level. When I think about it, it's going to cost. So if somebody told you this life over here was peaches and cream, I want to apologize to you because it ain't. Even in the midst of that, when I think about that struggle, God showed me something. He said, Fro, everything isn't for you to to just sit amongst and conquer it. Some stuff ain't. It's not meant for you to sit there and say through Christ who strengthens me, I can sit here in this. Now, some stuff is you got to flee. You got to get away from. But then I can hear some people say, no, nah, brother, Christ who strengthens me, I can do anything. But when I look at the scripture, when I think about Joseph in the role with Potiphar's wife. Man, she's trying to give him some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scripture didn't say that Joseph sat there and said, I'm waiting until I can overcome this. <laughs> he ain't sitting in the scripture. ain't say I'm sitting here waiting so I can overcome her body. Yeah, yeah. Nah, the scripture say he got up and flee. Yeah. He got up and ran away. Oh, See, there's some things that man, God didn't intend for you to overcome. You got to get up and roll. Yes, That's good. That's something that, 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 that majority of men probably could never overcome. Let's be 100. You got a married man who loving his wife for 40 years. You let him sit around a butt naked lady too long. Now his mind's somewhere else. It is what it is. And he can sit there all he wants is, man, through Christ Jesus, I'm, now you better get up and roll. You better get up and roll. You better get up and roll. So when we talk about sacrifice, man, for deliverance, man, to be free, you got to sacrifice some things. And it will cost you. It is going to cost you. This life here costs. So I sit there and I, in a vision, just thinking about how I'm looking at a bird's eye view and God say, who want a blessing? I was like, me. How much you willing to sow? <laughs> now, we know blessings ain't just our money. Now, nah, it's bigger than that. But God told me to talk about money. It's something about that money that we love. We love that money. Man, we want that money stacked to the ceiling. Can't nobody tell us that having money ain't the best thing going. You know what I'm talking about. You know that dollar. I ain't even going to talk about the green dollar. We're going to talk about the blue one. That's the one we really want. I remember when the blue one came out, boy, I was in love with them. And them big faces, oh, my God. I remember that era when the big faces came out. Man, we just wanted to collect them. They looked so different than the regular, the, the regular dollar. That joint was just cute to you. You was like, man, I need me a big face. Man, just the way they looked, they just was different. Wasn't nothing like having a pocket full of those new faces. You like, man, look at this here, look at this here. But like I said, we love some money. You know what time it is. You know when. IRS tell you that thing finna hit on the 21st. 
when them Texas, when them Texas finna hit on the 21st, and you excited, you know that 4200 finna post. You like, yeah, it's finna post. You done woke up real early. You know it don't clear that after one o'clock. You at two o'clock, like, yeah, it's there. We good. But what's so awesome about that 4200 when you be real with yourself? You really just want it to stay. Like you really would like to spin it, but not spin it. Like I want to spin it, but I want it to stay 4200. Because you already saying I ain't never going back broke ever again. I ain't going back broke no more. It is what it is. I'm, I'm keeping. I'm, I'm, I'm finna flip this. Something finna change. It's something. It's something about the dollar. It's something about the dollar that that, 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 that put another swag in you. you. You start feeling a little different. You start walking a little different. You start doing things a little different. You pull up to the gas station. No, you just saw it said 4200, but you're checking it again before you swipe. Man, this is what's up. But two weeks later, not even $36. Nah, 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 nah. I'm going I'm to take it to somebody who kind of budgeted a little bit better. It's half. He just spent half of it. So now he got 2100 but now he's back at the account trying to figure out what he spent the 2100 on. <laughs> because the reason being is because he really want to keep the money. Yeah. It ain't that he don't want the things that he want. He just want to keep the money. God showed me that we just want to keep the money. So when you talk about blessings, everybody want a blessing. He said, how much you willing to sow? How much? How much you willing to sow? And the problem is, he showed me. He said, he said, he said, he said, the thing, it's like, yeah, it's a lot of us that's bad stewards of the money. That's why the blessings be coming short. But he said, a lot of times, he said, this is another one. He said, when I tell them to sow, they don't sow. <laughs> he said, when I tell them to sow, they won't sow. He done told you to, he done told you to pay Miss Jones light bill and you act like you ain't hear it. He done told you to, 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 to go and pay for that lady groceries in Kroger's and you sitting there acting like you ain't hear it. He done told you to pay for the meal that's in front of you and you act like you ain't hear it. Told you to pay a cot note, but you act like you ain't hear it. He said that's what the problem is. That's why they sitting in the park, putting their head back down, keep texting. And all we want is a blessing. Jesus. Lord, I, 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 I want the blessing. I want the blessing, Lord. So when I think about God, when we sing these songs, for your glory, I will do anything. That's how God get the glory. That's how God get the glory when you move, when you sow. When you say, you know what, man, I'm going to be a blessing to this person right here. I'm going to do that. Now, for me, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn. You sit down, y'all sit down. I ain't going to toot my own horn. But, and it's me being transparent, not to get no, like, my wife is stay-at-home mama. I do gospel rap for a living. And I know it's people in here that know I didn't put money in their hand. Not for no praise. That's not where I'm at. And I'm not going to sit here and say it was a gang of money. Might have been 20. Might have been a 40. Might have been a 10. And this is me being transparent with you. It's a guy at the church I never gave any money to. At this church, I never gave him a penny. And I watched this man walk up to me and give me $1,000 a member of our church. Come on, come on. I ain't never gave them nothing. So when I tell you, man, I, 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 I have seen God move yeah, yeah. by being obedient. Yeah. God said, put money in his hand. Put some in her hand. Put some in her hand. Put some in his hand. And I did it. Yeah. Pay for some things. Whatever you got to do. Whatever I tell you to do, you do it. Yeah. 
So I ain't trying to be the dude in the vision, in the park, when God said you want a blessing, and he say so, and I turn around and look at my phone and act like I didn't hear what he said. If he tell you to move, you move. That's how you move forward. But see, it's about that dollar. We love that dollar. And he told me the reason why we want that dollar stacked up because it make us feel secure. It make us feel like that we don't need to depend on God. That's the only reason why we want a bunch of money. We want to be able to do our own thing. See, with a gang of money, man, it's like, Lord, I got it. You ain't even praying for your rent. You ain't even praying for the mortgage. You ain't even praying for the car note. You ain't praying for the school tuition. You ain't paying for nothing. You ain't praying for it because you got it. That's why sometimes God be keeping us down. We keep ourselves down, but then he help it. Because we ain't in we, we, we not being obedient to what he want us to do. So that's why you can't come up. And you sit back like, what's going on? He like, you know what's going on. I can't bless that. I can't bless that mess. I can't. You want somebody to walk up to you and, and, and hand you a thousand dollars and you ain't handing a 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. You ain't handing a 60. You ain't handing nothing. But you want somebody to, man, I'm going to tell you, man, the best time to sow is when you ain't got nothing. Man. That's the best time to sow when you ain't got nothing. Man, you're going to watch God work. You're going to watch God move. You're going to hit up MLG and W, and they're going to say, man, that thing already paid. You're going to be like, they somebody and I already took care of the gas. You good. But you got to be on obedience to see whatever God is trying to do. And the last one, in the vision. He said, watch this, fro. Who want to be married? And they was like, me, Lord, I'm sick of being single. I want to be married. That's me. That's me. And then he said, how long you willing to wait? See, one thing I realized, one thing I know for sure, you can't wait in the middle. Either you're going to wait with him or you're going to wait with him. Period. Ain't no in between. You got to either wait with Jesus or you're going to wait with the devil. It is what it is. And I'm going to be 100. I'm going to they good. We good. Because I'm going to say this and if they throw anything, I'm going to sick you on whoever they throw. They throw something at me or something. Man, if you living with your boyfriend and y'all having sex, you living with the devil. You waiting with the devil. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. You cannot walk in between and say, I'm living with him. We doing whatever we want to do. But then I'm waiting with Jesus. Nah. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. You cannot wait. And being a dodge and all these sinful acts and tell yourself that man, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting till he popped the, the question until he put the ring on my finger. Now nah, you waiting with the enemy. That's why you've been waiting for the past three years, because he already getting everything that he want to get out of you. And there it goes back to the sacrifice situation, man. If you ain't willing to sacrifice, then man, the ring probably might not never come. And then what's really crazy is that, man, even if it do come, man, the situation's so poisoned and so messed up. Man, it's so toxic to the point where, man, it ain't what you thought it was going to be. When I tell you, man, God was dealing with me, man, and, and he was telling me, he was like, man, Fro, he was like, man, what was... What's, what's really real about the glory in the world we live in. This come from quiet time. This come from being in my prayer closet, just asking God to speak to me, like, talk to me, Lord. Whatever you want to say, Lord, let's say it, Lord. He said, man, the, the situation's so jacked up now that he said, women will say, this, this, this from the Lord. He'll say, girl, he burned me. 
But I'm so glad and I give God the glory that it won AIDS. Instead of saying, girl, I've been on the wall for four years and I give God the glory because I finally found a husband. I've been waiting for four years. That's the type of glory that God want. God want that type of glory. He don't want the type of glory when you out here all in left field doing whatever you want to do and he bringing you out and he keeping you and all of a sudden you want to give him glory. Nah, he want glory because you've been on the wild. You've been headed in the business. He want that type of glory. He want, he want other women to see that you can do it. My brothers, you know what it is from the Lord. You say, man, bro, I give God the glory that she want pregnant. Now, he want the same thing for you, too. He wants you to say, I finally found a good wife. And you know what? I've been on the wall for five years. I ain't did nothing. I've been holding down through the strength of God. So at the end of the day, this is getting me giving God glory. That's the type of glory God want. He want that type of glory. But you got to be a fighter. Sound like a fight to me. Sound like a fight to me. Sound like a fight to me. Don't sound like no little wrestle. It sound like a fight to me. It sound like, man, it's getting it in. It's time to, it's, it's time to handle the business. It sound like a fight to me. You know, I remember when I was younger, let me say this right quick, on that pursuit of happiness, there was a scene on there, we about to wrap up, there was a scene on there where he had his foot on the door, not yet, he had his foot on the door, I don't know if you remember when he was in the bathroom with his son, sitting on the toilet tissue. And I don't know if it was a janitor. It was somebody who was trying to get in that door. And it seemed like it might have been a janitor because it seemed like they had a key and they was trying to wiggle it and they were pulling. And he put his foot on the door to keep them from opening it up. What I saw was he put his foot on the door because he knew he was at a bad place. And he couldn't afford for whoever to come through that door to see him like that. Because they would see his weakness. Now, they probably could have called the police and said, it's a junkie in the bathroom. And now all of a sudden the police come. But he fighting to keep his foot on the door because he knew he was at a bad place. Men and women of God, you know when you're at a bad place. And you want somebody and you want to be married. You got to pick the seasons of your life and make sure that you keep your foot at the door. Because it might not be time. It might not be time for him or her to see your weakness. Because when they see, the, see your weakness and if they're not of God. Black eyes. Scars all over you. Broken arms. Broken neck. The whole nine yards. So you keep your foot at the door. To keep them out. So when you sit back tonight and you think about, do you really got your foot at the door? Are you really keeping your foot at the door? Are you? Or are you letting them all in? Or they all just coming through the door, putting more bruises on you, making the situation worse than what it was. Keep your foot at the door. But like I say, sound like a fight to me. When I was younger, I remember in my era, we'll say, you saw a fighting, dude whooping on somebody, you'd be like, my dude scrapping. <laughs> you'd be like, dude scrapping. I asked my wife last night, I said, what y'all say when you was in Tresman? She said, man, we, if that dude was fighting, we'd be like, man, he jacking 5,000. <laughs> he jacking. He jacking. 
No, I remember hearing my, 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 my homie got Peter Roll, man. Like, like, man, that boy got thumped on, man. What'd you say? He, he got fanged. You know what I'm saying? Like, like man, it, it was what it, it was. Now, in this side over here, is your jacket? Are you fanning? You scrapping? You thumping? Or you just getting whooped on? Which one? Enemy beating you down. You jack my me? I'm at 5:30 a.m. jacking. We jacking over there on 242 Erickson. It is not a game. To the point where my kids come down the stairs and see me and my wife in the prayer closet getting it in. They need to see how to jack. They need to see how to scrap. They need to see how to thump. So you make sure that in this world we living in, man, you handling your business because the enemy may run over you. He'll run over you. You got to push like Chris Gardner, man. He pushed. He went all the way to the end. And like I said, it wasn't about the money. It was the fight. What's your fight look like? Because when you leave here today, man, it's going to be another fight. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that if there will be one today that is saying...